The search for America's best cake decorator is on. Okay. Two legs. This is not enough time for this. For the quarter sheet that I'm going to be making, I'm going to do an owl, a fondant covered owl. One thing that will set it apart from the other quarter sheets is instead of leaving it on the quarter sheet board, I'm using a very large round board to put it on and that will allow me to decorate the board a little bit too with stuff that will add to the owl. Owls are really popular right now. A lot of people use them for baby showers or first birthdays, toddler birthdays, but you can you find owls a lot of places these days, so just getting with the trend. The quarter sheet cake that I'm making, I'm going to try and make something a little more special than your standard sheet cake. I'm going to lay the purse on its side so it's a little more structurally sound. It won't take me as long to do than a stand-up purse. A little less complicated there. Purse cakes are real popular right now. The kids like them and this is an easy way to, to do a purse cake on its side. Still give the cool effect without adding cost for the customer. The fondant application really should be very thin. People don't like to eat in a thick kind of fondant, uh, so being able to roll it thin saves you cost and also provides a better product. For my quarter sheet cake challenge, I'm actually going to attempt to do a fun girls' night out purse. I'm not going to do a laden down purse. I'm going to do a full upright standing 3D purse. I'm a little worried with time on this one. 45 minutes is a really short time for a carved cake, even a, a simple little purse. So I'm going to be really biting my nails, cutting it down to the wire on this one. I'm planning on making a robot quarter sheet cake just because it seemed kind of fun and crazy and up my alley. We've had, you know, recently like a customer who wanted a robot cake and I think after that, that really got me thinking about how fun it could be and how many cool elements I could add and, you know, go into the mechanics of it and just do something that was fun and industrial and just kind of funky. I'm going to make my owl pink and blue, like a blush and a teal, so it's not your standard brown owl. It would be more fun colors. So I'm just going to cut out some circles here to put on the owl and kind of layer them up as feathers. I'll spend a good part of my time putting the feathers on the owl, but I think that it's really going to add to the look of the owl cake. I'm probably using more time than I would like putting these feathers on, but I'm almost done. so. Okay, I'm going to start throwing cake. There's going to be flying cake going everywhere. You want to have a really sharp knife when you carve, and if you can, you want your cake to be really cold, if not flash frozen. The colder it is, the easier it is to carve. Right now, this is not a cold cake. If you're like me, a girl who loves purses, when you go out, you get some of those leather purses where the color isn't, it's not completely all solid. It's got a little bit of a veiny look to it or, you know, a little change in color and stuff like that. So I tried not to mix my color completely in all the way and just have a solid, what I would call just a cartoonish type purse. I think the most difficult aspect of the quarter sheet will be the fondant mat getting the diamond impression just right. Because the diamonds, you need to make a match. If they, if you double and press the same thing and the lines are off, it just kind of, it doesn't keep the cake looking clean and neat. The mat is stiff, so you couldn't fold it around the cake, but I wanted to match those lines as best I can. So I struggled just a little bit with uh, getting those triangles to meet up just right. When I'm rolling fun and I kind of have to use my body weight, it's so stiff that you just have to put all the muscle you can into it. Usually I roll up on my forearm just to get that pressure the whole way through because so I'm really just pushing it. I have bruises, but <laughs> this is taking me longer than I really wanted it to. I might not have, be able to put as many details on this if I don't start feeling better about my time. In case all of you are wondering, you need to lift weights if you're going to be a cake decorator, at least upper body. I am using an impression mat on my purse to get that little alligator print on it because there's tons of pink alligators out there. And the thing I'm worried about most is covering the cake in, in a way to where I'm not going to stretch out or ruin that print on there. Let's get this bad boy on. Please say you're not stuck to the table. Mm. So what we're going to do is improvise. Instead of going all the way over, we're going to piece it on both sides. Got to know how to improvise, right? When I do the airbrush, I do like to use layers of colors. Putting something in, it might be 
blue as my final color, but I want just a little hints of underlying purple to give it more depth, makes the color look richer, um, it's not so flat. I think that's a good practice for any of the airbrushing. It's always good to have multiple colors. Even though you don't see it in the end, it's still there, and it's, it's obvious if you put a, a plain blue one next to the one that's had colors layered in. I think it's really important to stay clean when you're working with fondant. Fondant is, is different than, than buttercream. It, it's almost like not even cake decorating because it's almost just like a, a whole different project altogether. It turns into like a sculpting project, like you're playing with Play-Doh. On the owl cake, all I'm going to use is a thin layer of buttercream underneath and then it's all just rolled fondant. So it just turns into like a, a, a project that you're putting together, you know, you're cutting out pieces and gluing them on. So it's, it's a lot different than just your standard buttercream cake. Well, right now I'm giving myself little templates to pipe onto. I always feel like patience is the best thing you can have when you're working on any cake, but especially piping because you can't control icing. So, I mean, you have to be able to go with it and, you know, just taking the time and, and practicing, that's what's best. All those string work and piping techniques have kind of been lost and even bringing that back a little is just, I think, a great thing to do. This is a mold that I made using the make your own molds material. I use it for a lot of edges and this and that. So you're just putting it in and smishing it out. And I took a piece of bridal lace and created the mold. And I like this one because it's a good border. It's just very handy to have a mold. I like a lot of different kinds of molds. Everyone has a different purpose. Right now I have 15 minutes left feel okay about that, I think I can get done. The tree branch that it's gonna set on, it will be marbled fondant, so I'm gonna put brown food coloring in the fondant and mix it up, but not all the way, so it'll still have that wood grain effect. I'm just adding little pupils to the eyes. It's just the little details that can really add to it. For me personally, details on a cake are very, very important. You can do just a plain, simple purse, but you add a few little extra details into that, and it's just all the more over the top for the customer. I had a little extra time, decided to have a little fun with it, add a little charm to it, give it a little nameplate, because Cake Show now makes purses. I'm mixing these paints with a brush that I won't be using to paint them, just because it makes it kind of sticky and goopy. I always end up holding my breath when I'm painting just because I feel like breathing is going to sway me in some direction and mess something up. I'm definitely in a rush painting everything. I'm so used to having all the time in the world to do anything like that, so having to get it done in five or ten minutes is just crazy for me. We're going to say done. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with my purse. It's not the best purse I've ever done, but for 45 minutes, I think it's pretty darn cool. I love my little gems I have on it, because we've got to have the bling, being a girl, all about the bling, especially on a girl's night out. But yeah, and I've got my little, my little heart charm on there, and it all looks good. I'm excited. I like it a lot. Simple, clean, quick, something that the customer will like uh, without paying a ton of extra money for a, a big 3D purse. On the quarter sheet, I think the only thing I might have changed would be to add just a little bit of an accent color. Maybe the pearls could have been in pink or a different color so they pop a little bit more. But other than that, I'm quite pleased with the cake. I finished, uh, I think, five minutes early for my quarter sheet, which I was glad that I was in under time, but it kind of makes me think that I should have spent a little more time at the beginning. I'm happy with how it turned out, even though I was under time. I really like doing all the little wheels a lot. I just think, you know, the metallics were fun, the shapes are kind of different, and overlapping them and kind of making a unique pattern was a really fun time. I'm really happy with it. I mean, it's funky and it not only represents me, but the place I work, and it's just kind of different and exciting.